Hey, grade 11s. Guys, you did it. You made it to the last day of the first week of summer semester. Only three more weeks to go. And if this week was any indication of the caliber of work that you guys are going to produce over the course of the summer, I'm going to be a very happy teacher. The level of insight, uh, careful consideration that has gone into your assignments, into the questions that you've been asking and the discussion posts and responses you've been giving to each other have just really been top notch and I've been thrilled with the level of work that you've been producing. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so because you shared with me yesterday, I now know that Jill could happily spend 24 un uninterrupted hours in any art museum in the entire world. I now know that, let's see, there's a list here. Katrina, Aaliyah, Dakota, Amanda, and Taylor are happiest on the beach. And Leah would love to spend a full day hiking in the quiet tranquility of the woods in Muskoka. Thanks very much to everyone who shared on the Padlet yesterday. Today, take a look below at the birthday scenario chart and use the month and date of your birthday to determine your response to be added to the Padlet. As for me, my birthday is February 9th. So my birthday scenario indicates that I am very happily married to Mr. Barack Obama. And let me tell you, I have zero problems with this scenario. Okay, so your last lesson for this week will be a last kind of explicit look at stereotypes and their impact on the First Nation, Métis, and Inuit communities in Canada. So to approach this concept, a couple things we're going to be doing today. Uh, one of the first things you're going to be doing is watching a short film entitled For Angela. Now, I admit that this film looks a little 80s because it was filmed in the 80s, but unfortunately, a lot of the issues that arise in this film are still quite relevant. Um, so before watching, you'll note that there is uh, an article that you need to read for context. The film requires viewers to be familiar with the importance, the um, religious and cultural significance uh, that hair plays in the Indigenous community. So you're going to want to read up on this first so that you understand when you get to this portion of the film why um, the scene involving someone's hair is so important. Uh, you're going to be instructed to pause the film after an Indigenous woman and her daughter are shown being harassed on a city bus uh, and victim uh, they are victims of a bunch of uh, different racial slurs. So what I'm asking you to do here is to uh, pause and then put yourself in the position of one of several characters that are present in this scene. I want you to ask yourself, how do you think you would handle this same situation had you been one of the people that was present? So my intention here is not to shame anyone. However, I really urge you to be as honest with yourself as possible here. I mean, it, it feels like the right or the honorable answer is to say that you would jump in, you would defend this woman, uh, that you wouldn't tolerate any kind of bullying. And yeah, that's a lovely thing to say, but if that was the honest truth and we all said that we would always jump in and stop bullies, there would not be any bullying and we all know that's not the case. So try to be as honest with yourself as possible about how you truly feel that you would handle the situation and more importantly, try to explain why you feel that that would be your reaction in this situation. And once you're done with For Angela, we're going to put some of our researching skills to use today by researching and writing a point evidence analysis paragraph that focuses on a person from the past or present in Canada's First Nation, Métis, or Inuit community. So your task here is going to be to use evidence about this person, so things that they have done, accomplished in their lifetime, that helps to prove that some commonly held stereotype that people have about the Indigenous community just isn't true. It's invalid or it's inaccurate. So this particular task can make some people a bit uneasy because ultimately what it's asking you to do is to state what is uh, a stereotype you've heard people um, use or that you've heard people refer to about the Indigenous community. And a lot of people feel like, well, I don't want to say it. Um, you know, I know it's not right. Remember, you're not saying that you find this particular stereotypical view to be valid. It's just one that you've witnessed. Either you've heard other people say, you've seen it in the media, etc. So this might make you a bit uncomfortable, but ultimately remember that your purpose here is to argue that this stereotype isn't true because the person you've chosen to research from this community is actively disproving it. 
There are several steps. Um, they're very specific and there are a couple of organizers that you need to follow and use really carefully in order to ensure success on this task. This is not the time to be cutting corners. Please follow this uh, set of instructions and please use these organizers um, because they really spell out exactly what it is I'm asking from you. Additionally, you're gonna to wanna to carefully review the rubric for this task to make sure that you are meeting the criteria necessary for the mark that you're hoping to achieve. Because it is Friday, I'm going to ask that you please make sure that you have submitted all tasks from this week by this Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So that means all tasks that were assigned Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today need to be finished and submitted just before midnight on Sunday night. I'm gonna be calling home to follow up with anyone who has outstanding assignments as of Monday morning. So if you wanna avoid this phone call home, please make sure that your work is up to date. Send me any emails or instant messages necessary to help you to get all this stuff done. Thanks everyone. I hope you have a safe, great weekend and I'll talk to you on Monday. Take care.